Hi, this is Chris Hefley with Bandit Software, and we're continuing our look at some of the newest features in LeanKit Kanban with organizational level reporting and the organization dashboard. One of the new things you'll see is this dashboard link on the board list. You click this and it'll take a moment to calculate the statistics for the all the boards across your organization the first time you click it, after which those statistics will be cached. Okay. So you can see, first of all, an uh, organization dashboard that gives you a snapshot of the, or an overview of activity levels and warning signs um, across your organization. So um, today, cards moved and the seven-day trend. Um, so there were several moved back on the 15th and not much activity the last few days. And then today I moved a few cards. And you can also look at that per board and see where the activity is going on. Um, same thing with cards created and looking back at trends for that at the different boards. And uh, this is one of my favorite parts is the warning indicators. So you have a number of blocked cards on any of the boards in your uh, organization, a uh, number of lanes that are over their work in process limit, the number of work in process override events, so today there were two, and the number of cards that are on, on any board in your organization that are currently past due. So you can look for where those are. Okay, so we also have some organizational level charts. Um, first one I want to show you is aggregate cycle time. Now, we can look at cycle time across different boards all at once. So I'm going to, you can scroll down and see all the different boards in your organization and that you can set the start and stop lanes for each one. So I'm going to turn a couple of these off there's not much real real data in them they're just there to show structural uh, capabilities but some of these do have some good um, generated data so the start lanes I'm going to say it's valid for either of these leave that there um, start lanes do the same thing here here and and then for finish lane we will Leave this first one the same. For this one, we'll change it to done, 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 this done, done. And we'll look at cycle time for things after the 1st of January. So we will pull this down to January 1st and refresh the data. So you can see the different cycle times of the different boards that we've been looking at, uh, including an average cycle time, the big red line in the middle. It's difficult to compare one board cycle time to another. It's often not apples to apples, but you can look at the trends. You can see which boards are getting higher in cycle time and which boards are getting lower and start looking for uh, root cause analysis. Um, another thing I'd like to show you, let's go back to the dashboard. And we have activities distribution now. What are activities, you may ask? An activity diagram, as you can see here, looks very much like a cumulative flow diagram. And what we're actually doing here is looking at cumulative flow across multiple boards at the same time, without having all of the different columns and different lanes and sublanes from different boards on one chart, which would be unwieldy and uh, difficult to understand and probably not very useful. What we've allowed you to do is create activity types that are common throughout your organization. So under the administration menu in your account, you can find the activity types list and you can define what activity types you want to include. Each lane on the board, you can then assign this activity type to. So what this allows you to do is to take a look at the amount of work in process in the various activities that you define for your organization um, across multiple boards at once in a way that makes sense. So let's take a look at this particular activity workload diagram. We're looking at two boards at once here and I've gone ahead and pre-configured that and, and looking at a short period of time. And so you can see the development activity is this blue one here in the middle and you can see it starts to bulge in places and get higher and lower. Here's a place where the QA activity down here at the bottom, you start seeing a bump in the QA uh, lane. And you also start seeing larger gap, larger bulges in the uh, de deployment area where things are sitting and waiting for deployment. A deployment gets done, it drops down lower, and then starts to build up over time. 
And you can also see that across the organization at this point, we're starting to get more and more work in process for the development teams. One of our customers actually came to us and asked us to put something like this in because what they said was uh, the QA department has lanes on multiple boards, uh, but it's difficult to see across multiple boards how much work is actually on QA's plate. And so doing things like this and allowing us to look at how, how overloaded might the QA department be, um, we can look then at the activities distribution and see exactly how much of our work in process is devoted to these different activities across multiple boards at once. This again is basically a cumulative flow diagram across multiple boards in the organization um, using categories that you've defined for your organization. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more. We've still got more new features to show you from Lean Kit Kanban coming up in the next day or so.